You know, artificial intelligence is so advanced now that it can assist doctors with diagnoses, translate text from any language in real time, and create art. But it still works using the same kind of computer parts made from silicon that have been around since the 1950s. Some scientists and companies decided it's time to step forward and build computers out of living things instead. Ouch! This new field is called biocomputing, and it uses things like tiny clusters of lab-grown cells called organoids to create new kinds of computers. One company in Switzerland called Final Spark has created a special computer platform using human brain organoids to help process information. You can rent this platform online for $500 a month if you're a scientist and want to do some research. The main goal of the company that made the computer is to create AI that uses 100,000 times less energy than the powerful artificial intelligence systems we have today. Each brain organoid the computer uses is very small, only a half a millimeter wide and there are four of them in each processing unit. These organoids are connected to eight tiny wires, called electrodes, that can send signals to the neurons inside the organoids. These electrodes also connect the organoids to regular computer systems. The neurons in the organoids are given a small amount of dopamine, a chemical that makes us feel good, to encourage them to learn. So it's just like what your brain does when you learn something new. Thanks to electrical signals and dopamine rewards, the neurons in the organoids can form new connections, again, much like how your brain works. And mine too, sometimes. If this process works well, these organoids could one day act like the processors in today's computers, except they would do the same kinds of jobs in a much more energy-efficient way. If you want to check out how it all works yourself, the tiny brain-like organoids are being live-streamed 24-7 so anyone can watch what they're doing. The big task for researchers is to figure out how to make the neurons in these organoids do what we want them to do. Scientists from 34 universities have asked to use Final Spark's biocomputers, and the company has already allowed scientists from nine schools to start working with them. Each team is studying something different about biocomputing. For example, the team at the University of Michigan is exploring how to use electrical and chemical signals to control the organoids, which could help create a special language just for these biocomputers. Scientists at Lancaster University in Leipzig, Germany, are trying to figure out how to make the organoids work with different types of AI learning models. Organoid computers aren't as powerful as the regular silicon ones we use today. There isn't a standard technology to manufacture these tiny brain-like organoids yet. Also, since they're made of living cells, they don't live forever. Right now, Final Sparks organized last about 100 days, which is a big improvement from the first experiments. They used to only live for a few hours. But the process of creating organoids has become much smoother. The lab currently has between 2,000 and 3,000 organoids. Now, Final Spark isn't the only company trying to find new alternatives to the usual silicon chips. The scientist in Spain studies another kind of biocomputing called cellular computing. It involves using specially modified living cells to create systems that can remember things, make decisions, and work like basic computers do today. The scientists believe that because cellular computers can react to changes in their environment, they could help fix damaged ecosystems. Regular computers can't do much of this, but a biocomputer made of bacteria could be placed in a lake, for example, to give detailed information about the water's health. It would react to different chemicals and conditions. Another scientist from the University of the West of England is exploring how fungi could be used in computing. Fungi have long thread-like structures called mycelia that can send out tiny electrical signals similar to how our brain cells work. The scientist thinks that these fungal networks could be used to create a brain-like computer system that can learn, recognize patterns, and do other smart things. His team has already taught fungal networks to help computers do certain math problems. They believe that using fungi for computing could be better than using brain cells because it's easier, cheaper, more ethical, and works well with current technology. While a computer made of human neurons is in the testing stages, scientists at UC Davis Health have invented a new brain-computer interface that could turn brain signals into speech with nearly perfect accuracy, up to 97%. Scientists put special sensors in the brain of a man who had trouble speaking because of his health condition. 
when they turned on the system, the man could start sharing what he wanted to say within minutes. When someone with a similar condition wants to speak, the new device turns their brain signals into text that appears on a computer screen. The computer can then say the words out loud. To create this system, the team worked with a 45-year-old man who had a condition that made his arms and legs weak and his speech very difficult to understand, so he needed help to communicate. A doctor planted a special device into the patient's brain. He placed tiny sensors in a part of the brain that helps control speech. These sensors were designed to pick up signals from 256 spots in the brain. The device detects when the brain is trying to move muscles to talk. It listens to the brain's signals and turns them into sounds like syllables, which then form the words the person is trying to say. This invention is just one example of the latest trend for computers to be part of the clothes we wear and even part of our bodies. We're making new prosthetic limbs that can do more than just help people grab things. They can also send a message back to the brain, telling them that something has been touched. This changes how we think about being human because it means that even a metal limb can connect to our brain like a real part of us. According to experts, computers of the future will mix together living things, physical objects, and digital technology. Things like 3D printing, biotechnology, robots that help people move, smart devices that connect everything, self-driving cars, and different types of artificial intelligence will be even more widespread than they are now. Things are changing really fast, so it's hard to make predictions about the computer industry even as close as 2030. But experts agree that quantum computing, which brings the science of physics into computers, will be super important. Computers could become so tiny, they're going to be the size of an atom. Quantum computing is expected to make huge changes in how we use AI and machine learning and search through big data. It means we could get even better shopping suggestions and smarter tools for our home. In medicine, it could help discover new medicines faster and help people live longer, healthier lives. Quantum computing will also affect many industries like privacy, finance, healthcare, entertainment, and technology. It could change how we work, leading to new breakthroughs in robotics, better surgical tools, and improved digital tools for our jobs. It will also make technology better, as it should make supply chains more efficient, improve traffic management, help with financial planning, and streamline many different processes. For most of the time we've used computers, everything we do on them happens in 2D, meaning that it's flat, like looking at a picture or reading on a screen. Sometimes, special jobs like 3D modeling or design use 3D, but that's not common for most people. But now, we're starting to move from doing things in 2D to exploring 3D virtual worlds, where things look and feel more like they do in real life. VR gadgets are still pretty expensive and not available to everyone, but big companies are working on extended reality headsets, and this tech will likely become more and more widespread. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.